Puma Soccer Universe. Well, match day two of the Champions League group stage is in the books. And weirdly enough, again, it was that the second match day, at least the later games, there was a, it was a lot faster than the first one, where it took a while until goals were scored. And this was happening exactly the same thing uh last week but it with uh opposite groups so uh well not last week two two weeks ago so that to me was most interesting but uh the early games were kind of slow um with first of all napoli and i have not seen much of this game i saw that napoli is using a different away jersey for the champions league than they use in the league so that kind of inspired me to uh, will ins may inspire me to make a part nine, the stuff that I've missed, and that is the one jersey for sure. Uh, although I think there was another, yeah, there was one uh, more thing that Leipzig, the jersey for Leipzig, of course, switched. Uh, that the white is the home jersey, and they have the special away jersey. But you know, small potatoes uh, there will not change the ratings. But maybe I'll do something like that uh, to make a part nine. Maybe there's another jersey that I have to cover and then it's worth it. Anyway, uh, so Napoli really, that was a disappointing result given that Salzburg completely annihilated um, the gank. You would expect Napoli to win that and that's exactly these type of results. I remember at the last Champions League, the 0-0 in Belgrade, also a game that they just have to win and they again didn't win. So. Um, Napoli had more chances, Genk also had a few, I heard, but you know, I barely saw anything of that game. Um, and the other game uh, that was early was Slavia Prague against Dortmund, where Dortmund got two goals. Uh, was it Hakimi who scored twice, second time with lots of blood on his hand? Uh, the first one was actually quite beautiful uh, how he did it. Uh, you know, wiggling around, <laughs> faint, fainting, and then getting a nice shot off. Although, um, also, if he is a little bit more aware, he could have seen that uh, there are other players in the box. But you know, if you score the goal, it's fine. If you don't score the goal, then you're in trouble. Uh, but also, Slavia Prague had uh, good chances, and it was really a case of not taking your chances in this uh, in this game. And that's usually the difference between if if an underdog is playing up to snuff with a um, uh, favorite, they gotta take their chances because the favorite is usually taking the chances and that was exactly what was happening to uh, Dortmund but you know it was a win that Dortmund needed and uh, they look actually quite good in this group for now. Um, so those were the early games really not much to say and now let's go through it group by group. Um, since I'm wearing Barcelona and I actually want to wear the 1011 jer jersey but then uh, yeah I, I remember this one and it's not hanging in my room so I said okay let's take this one it's uh, it's my first Barca jer jersey and, and it is somewhat special I have to say too so yeah I didn't want to uh, do the 1516 to be honest uh, 1617 it was 1617 uh, the Barcelona inter game was actually one of two halves almost ah, not quite but you know at least from chances uh, you know I saw uh, what I watched was the switching around between the games uh, where you get one opinion and then I watched uh, high highlights of three games this morning uh, and then you get a little bit of a different impression again so uh, I find this quite interesting the <laughs> best thing is to watch the game but you know I really want to keep uh, on top of as many games as I can so that's why um, yeah I do what I do uh, Inter right off the start gets the 1-0 through Lautaro Martinez uh, who you know it, it wasn't even such a clear run on goal but it reminded me immediately of the goal that Pato scored against Barcelona uh, was it in 2012 I want to say 2011 it was 2011 in a Virtus Champions yes uh, 
uh, where Pato scored, uh, I think within 20 seconds. Uh, La Otto did take a little bit longer, I think it was just two minutes on the clock. But again, uh, early start for Inter and Barcelona clearly was shocked, needed some time uh, and didn't really had lots of possession. I mean, typically Barcelona, lots of possession, but Inter defending very smartly. Um, and Barcelona not finally finding a breakthrough. Uh, on the contrary, I mean, Lautaro Martinez, if it wasn't for what they're saying, he could have made it with a header 2 0. They're saying really. It was a, a safe, similar to what Oblak did against Benzema and the uh, Derby Madrileño. So that was uh, pretty uh, remarkable. I think uh, Sensi had a. Oh no, um, not Sensi, Gagliardini. Uh, had also a pretty good chance that just got deflected by Longley. Uh, if there wasn't a foot there, it's not going. It, it is. It's gonna go in, and it's two 0 Inter, which probably the way they they were playing uh, there would not have been undeserved. And I'm I'm sitting on the couch, uh, more or less thinking, huh, what jersey will I wear tomorrow? And you know. I kind of was thinking I should wear the jersey of the winner of the Inter Barca game, but then I thought, oh, I might get way too comfortable in this Inter jersey. Fortunately, in the second half, uh, Inter then only resorted to defending, and it rarely goes well. Although, from what I heard, a little bit saw, they did it very well. It took really a moment of genius from Luis Suarez. Uh, to make it 1-1. Uh, one, one. Wonderful strike, I think. Um, the ball was played across uh, the uh, box, you know, at, at, at the edge of the box and he volleys it into the net. I mean, Suarez goal par excellence. And then again, Barca, yes, putting under pressure, but um, not getting through. But in the end, it was of all players, uh, Godin, who was slightly found out of position by Messi. You know, Messi makes one of his few runs, and he had two free kicks that didn't amount to anything. Uh, you can clearly see Messi is not Messi yet. Uh, I think he will take some time until he gets fit again. But there's one time where he runs through through defense, and Godin is a little bit out of, out of position, enabling. Uh, Suarez with one touch to sneak past him and the Uruguayan duel and get the winner for Barcelona and avoiding a horrible start for Barcelona. Horrible start you you want to say for Inter but more based on the fact that they didn't get the point uh, again, the, all the points against Prague. I mean if you lose in Barcelona that's not too bad but you know their uh, huge week starts off kind of on a yes yeah, sour note because I think a draw in Barcelona was well in there but now we have uh, Dortmund and Barcelona ahead in this group uh, Dortmund I think a goal difference ahead you have it here uh, and Inter and Slavia only with one point already a little bit in trouble now and, it really doesn't look good for Inter. I mean, Inter needs to needs now the two games against Dortmund um, to get back into contention. It has to be said like that. And uh, let's go. So that that was Group F. Let's go Group E um, because we already talked about Napoli. The Liverpool Salzburg game probably was the game of the evening in many ways. Where first Liverpool show uh, shows that they are. The defending champions uh, playing sensationally and not letting Salzburg breathe and this was I mean for me also kind of oh, what will either Salzburg will get something out there but I couldn't really see it because I know exactly Klopp plays a similar style and when those two styles clash mm, it's always a question how will this impact uh, the game and uh, there's clearly more talent on the Liverpool side. Uh, we don't have to make any other assumptions there. And Salzburg didn't look good at all. I mean, uh, Saad, uh, Sadio Mane gets gassed one 0 from from a position where I honestly have to say I didn't feel this isn't like this huge goal chance, a goal scoring chance. But uh, yeah, uh, two 0 by Robertson, nicely played. 
uh, the three nil. I have. I don't know uh, if I want, don't want to put it on the Salzburg goalie, who is also the national team team goalie. Um, he let this, uh, the uh, this, he made a save, but it bounced right to Salah, and I, I have a feeling that actually could have probably held on to it, or you know, uh, do something on the other side, and his knee, knee, his defender, a defender of Salah as well, who makes it 3 0, and you think, oh, I'm afraid, and then uh, it was set, a goal in Liverpool again, and you were afraid, oh, this is gonna be 4 0. No, Wang. Pulls one back really nicely. I mean, uh, rounding around um, Van Dijk and putting it nicely in, in into the net. And you thought, yeah, that's a, that's a consolation goal. No, the problem was that it is for early or in the second half. Uh, Salzburg makes it 3 2 through uh, Minamino, and then Holland came on, and in the 59th is suddenly 3 3. Uh, Klopp afterwards said that you know after they play sensationally for about 35 minutes they just start to more to come through the middle which plays exactly into the uh, st strengths of Salzburg and they and Salzburg is a team that is gonna punish you and they have already scored nine goals now Liverpool then fought themselves back and get uh, again the lead through Salah and that was basically it but a game that you thought could have gone completely wrong for Salzburg was salvaged, but in the end there are no points, no goal there either. And that means now in the table that Napoli has four points, so they're leading in the table. Uh, Salzburg and Liverpool three each, Liverpool holding the edge thanks to head to head and Genk gets one point, so yeah. That group is going to be interesting now, so Osberg has to play twice against Napoli and I think that will be the duel for the second spot, uh, given what we saw earlier this year in the Europa League. I would think that Napoli will do it, but uh, Napoli has to show more, for sure. Um, Dent leaves the groups G and H. Uh, let's do G and H and continue with the noble theme. Leipzig against Lyon, uh, what a weird game that, that, that was and I actually hated that the, it was not a great game uh, from all of that I can say. I mean, they spent, of course it's German TV, they spent a lot of time uh, on that one and Leip Leipzig was a little bit hopeless, especially Timo Werner had two clear chances, two sitters. I mean, one, he just has to make this shot, and the second, um, he runs clear on goal and then wants to lift it over the goalkeeper, but in such a weird manner, it goes, flies way above goal, way above goal. Uh, those are two goals that Leipzig has to make. Who makes the goal? Memphis Depay, um, who takes the ball from his fellow teammate, who uh, got it off a defender, you know, individual. Uh, mistake for sure there, uh, defensive mistake, and also the second goal for, for Lyon was also a defensive mistake, uh, and those killed Leipzig. Uh, they tried to get back in, but honestly, too little. And Leipzig, uh, it is so funny because they seemingly have, a, they of course have the same management as Salzburg. I mean, let's not kill, kill them. They try to everything keep them apart. But basically, Leipzig is that half the team has played in Salzburg before. So, I mean, those know the idea, but I don't know. Salzburg, with much less heralded players, gets much more done uh, in Europe than Leipzig. And that's something that you got to think about a little bit. Um, I have to say, Leipzig is a big dis dis disappointment. Cannot say it any other way. Uh, in the other game of the group, Zenit St. Petersburg, against Benfica and I thought that Benfica should be the team not as a team 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 beater I, I would have given that to Leipzig but they were completely outclassed by St. Petersburg um, Tuba gets the first goal uh, that, 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 that was a defensive error but then they get two more uh, one on goal and one I think uh, Amun uh, probably make it 3-0 and 
it was a nice uh, consolation goal for Benfica, but it ends 3-1 for St. Petersburg and they have now four points as does Lyon. Leipzig due to the win in Lisbon. Um, uh, it is it, it is on three and Benfica only on zero points. That's honestly disappointing. And now uh, we have Benfica Lyon. Basically, that's that will decide where Benfica will go. I really thought that Benfica could at least get a second spot in this group. I would have favored them over both Lyon and uh, Saint Petersburg, but clearly no. I was wrong. I guess getting rid of Joao Felice. It's not a good thing, so that's where the no bull in my headline is coming from because both Red Bull teams with zero points. However, and now let's go to the Cruyff side um, that Ajax played in Valencia almost a perfect game from their point of view, meaning that they were absolutely clinical, almost like Bayern. Uh, not to that extent, but they. Uh, it, was, it, it was just a weird game, especially when you watch the highlights. I mean, Ajax playing in their horrible, horrible, horrible away jerseys. Uh, away kit, I, I should say. The jersey itself is not not that bad, but paired with orange pants. I don't know, it looks horrible. Anyway, uh, Akim Ziek, wonderful first goal over Silesen, who of course was a long time Ajax player. Wonderful 1-0, uh, but Valencia gets the chance to get back into the game. A uh, stupid challenge in the penalty panel, panel box by Hernandez, um, who takes down Gedesh. And I have to say, uh, I was warned when shouldn't there be a rule that once the ball has been played, you cannot have a follow anymore, but then I thought this is stupid. It was clearly a late, a late challenge. Uh, if you're so stupid to take down the attacker, it should be a worthy penalty. Uh, again, lo lots of discussions, and this is now all referees have to tell the goalies, yeah, please, please, you have to stand on the line and uh, wait, da, 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 and there's war. Uh, let them play and I find it stupid. Anyway, Dani Parejo steps up and into the sky. That was a letter for Ajax, and then Ajax makes it, you know, the game is kind of a little bit open, but Ajax makes it 2-0 through Quincy Promise. Uh, Rodrigo hits the post, but Ziek with a similar great shot, uh, also hits the bar, so the woodwork uh, played a big role there. Uh, so in the first half, it ends 2-0 Ajax, but it could well have been 2-2, even 2-3 in favor of Ajax. Uh, it was all in there, but Ajax was clearly the more mature team, which is funny because they're such a young team. Uh, Valencia, a little bit, you know, trying to find themselves, I have the feeling. Uh, in the second half, Valencia really had great chances and it, if it wasn't for Anano to pull out one great save and one more clumsy one again against the post, uh, Valencia could have gone get back in, in, in the game but Ajax kills it off with a nice shot taken by Van der Beek and Van der Beek uh, should have had maybe had a fourth, uh, it would, would have been the best but it was cleared off the line. Ajax looks good in that one, so the two Greif teams, Barcelona and uh, Ajax get their six points. So that's why we have no bull and lots of cry. Uh, and the last game in this group was between Lille and Chelsea, which was in a way headed for a draw all, all along. I mean, Chelsea took the lead, uh, which was then equalized by uh, Lille. And I think Lille had chances, Chelsea not so much, but then William makes a pretty cool goal, I have to say. I mean, the way he one time times it, he lets it hit the ground and the defender and go, go over the goal, that's... I, I think it was intended that way. And chapeau for, for that one, because that was also a really nicely taken uh, goal. And so Chelsea gets also a win in the group now, Ajax leads very clearly with six points. 
makes me very happy to be honest because I thought that this will be a tougher group for Ajax. It might get, but you know, getting two uh, two wins and now having to play Chelsea where you also would favor them now. I mean, the way they're playing looks pretty cool for them. Um, Valencia holds the tiebreak over Chelsea and Lille is without points so far. They should have probably gotten a point yesterday against Chelsea because that game was really headed for a draw, but was not meant to be. So yeah, that ends Champions League match day two. I think it was a pretty remarkable one, uh, despite there not being, I mean, there was Barca Inter, but I don't think it was that great, great of game. The other big clash, of course, was a, a huge result, but not necessarily a great game between Spurs and Bayern. I will not make any prediction for now who's gonna win the whole thing because you don't know. The group stage is more or less get through and that's that. You don't need to uh, find now your uh, your, your favorite because uh, teams that play amazingly in the group stage rarely, rarely win uh, the competition. It's really about getting yourself in the position, making it into the next the knocker stages. And I think once you're in the quarterfinal, then at that point, we should actually discuss who is gonna win it. I think the favorites are probably still Manchester City, but you know, they have not been all that convincing either. Europa League tonight, meaning my last playing at Sporting Lisbon. That's the game that I will not watch the switch around channel. I will watch Lusk unless they go down considerably, then I might go to the other channel. Uh, let's see for the early, for, for the early games uh, what will happen uh, there. I will try to get a little bit more info. Anyway, let me know how you liked yesterday's games. Uh, I will, um, would be very interested to see your uh, perspective on things. Drop a comment, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. I want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.